once upon a time, there was an ancient king who had the power of the sun. He wanted to live closer to his subjects instead of in his far-off castle, so he sent out his royal officials out to prepare a house for him in a local village in the humble countryside. Who will prepare a house for the sun king? The court officials cried from the street corners. Who will furnish a room for him to stay in? After searching all day, finally three families stepped up to volunteer. The family with the straw house, the family with the stone house, and the family with the green house. The court officials told the sun king about the three possible houses, and so he traveled out to the village to see. The first family was foolish. They did not understand the sun king's power. As soon as they opened their door to him, his fiery sun power scorched their straw house so that there was nothing left. The second family was greedy and wanted to steal the sun king's power. As soon as they opened the door to their stone house, a cage with iron bars waited for the king. But the iron bars could not withstand the sun king's heat, and they melted immediately. But the third family was wise. They knew the sun king's power was meant to share and to nourish. He entered the green house, and his power and warmth gave life to all the plants and all the inhabitants of the house, and everyone in the village lived happily ever after. The end. I tell this story because today we celebrate the feast of Corpus Christi, which is Latin for the body and blood of Christ. Corpus Christi. Jesus, the King, is the Son of God, and He wants to stay with us. He wants to dwell with us. He asks us in the Gospel today, Where is my guest room? Where is the furnished room prepared for me? This is not a selfish demand of an ungrateful guest, but rather it is an invitation to prepare a room for him, to furnish the house for him. The house and the room that he wants to dwell in is you. He wants to dwell in your house, which is your soul, and he wants to dwell in the room, the interior of your heart, your soul. He gives us this opportunity to accept him, and know him and believe in him. His presence in the Eucharist is real, and we accept it into our lives, into our souls, and into our bodies. There's two ways that we can do this. First, know. K-N-O-W. First off, we need to know what we are doing, what we are receiving. When we come up to communion in a few moments and hold out our hands or our mouths, we must know that we are accepting and receiving the presence of Jesus in the form of bread and wine, his body and blood. The second way is to accept. We accept this gift, this abundance of grace, not because it's something that we deserve or it's something that we can control. Rather, this gift is not something we possess. This gift is something that possesses us. When we accept our Lord and Savior into our body and soul, it's something that sets us on fire. We can go out into the world, preach his name, spread his grace. The final thing I'd like to draw your attention to, the wood and stone box behind there. It's called a tabernacle. Say it with me. Tabernacle. Good job. The tabernacle is something that goes back 3,000 years to Moses and the Israelites wandering in the desert. We heard about it in the first reading today. The tabernacle is what is called the place where God makes his dwelling, where he chose to dwell with the Israelites in the desert. Right now we have a tabernacle here where we put the Eucharist after Mass, and God dwells with us in this desert, not the desert of the summer heat, but more so our desert, our pilgrimage on this earth while we are away from heaven, the promised land. But an amazing change is about to occur because in a few moments when we come forward to receive the Eucharist, to come to communion, we are going to become living tabernacles. 
We are not made of stone and wood, but we are made of flesh and blood. And just as Christ dwells in that box, he's going to be able to dwell in us, in our soul, in our spirit, in our heart, and in our mind. And so on this feast of Corpus Christi, I invite all of us to come forward to communion to receive the Lord and go out into the world as living tabernacles, spreading his grace, his love, his mercy, and his message of peace. Amen.